What's going on guys and welcome back to another Satisfactory video. Well last time we started on the water bottle in an empty canisters facility so we can ship it around the world where need be. And that's because this little section here was too small, we just needed to expand it and I think moving it over into the empty area is just going to be a lot more practical. But this factory is only going to get bigger and bloody bigger and that includes more and more trains. So as stated in the last Satisfactory video, I want to start extracting the quartz from this location. So that's six nodes right here, then the ones from the Northern Forest, and then the ones from this cave right here. And that is located just to the right of the copper ore right here. And all these coal ore. <laughs> And then we're going to send all that down train lines and it's going to come to this location. Uh, it's big enough space and it's just plenty of room. Plus it's right next to the highway. So it's just a no brainer really. And then we're going to bring that all down train lines uh, and then it's going to come to this location right here where we're going to make our quartz, silica, uh, crystal oscillator factory uh, and all that good stuff because we are aiming for uh, radio control units. And as you know, radio control units do need uh, crystal oscillators, but depends on which one we're going to go with yet. So all I know is that both recipes require, well, crystal oscillators. It just depends on which one. Like, I'm definitely not thinking the rubber one. I'm definitely going to go along the aluminium casing because we're producing them. Circuit boards, we can easily do that. Uh, so I'm more than likely going to go with a standard recipe because we've got the casings. We just need to make computers. And we've also uh, got the crystal oscillators here as well. Computers are going to be super easy. And that'll be in another episode later down the line when we start working on a computer factory. And then we can combine everything into one location so we can start making radio contunit uh, radio contunits? Radio control units so we can actually start working on uh, drones. We can unlock the blenders, which means we can work on the next plants. We can start working on nuclear stuff and all that good stuff. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to what we have to do. But that also means I want you guys to let me know in the comments because it's going to be a super challenge. And we was talking about this on the stream the other day. We was talking about nuclear power. And as you know, they require quite a bit of water. Do we science it and test my abilities within Satisfactory to see if we can run a nuclear power plant via bottled water? So that does mean that water bottle plant over there is going to be absolutely mega. And speaking of mega, my third album has just dropped on Spotify and all major streaming platforms. So if you're a content creator and want to use some DMCA copyright free music, it's all for you. But also, if you're not a content creator, you can just chill out to it whilst you're building your factories and it's a vibe. You can even go to sleep at night. It's that chill. <laughs> Links in the description if you're interested. So you've seen me place train stations down and extractors down multiple times and I want to get right to the source, which is going to be this quartz facility. So that's what I went and did. We've got a little bit of a pitchfork train line here. The central line goes to the right hand side station, which drops off all the quartz. And then the left hand side station is going to be where the bottled water and empty canisters go into. And the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to use the pure quartz recipe because it's pure quartz it's going to require water so what we're going to do is we're going to send them bottled water around into a building over here which is going to unpackage the bottled water which will then send the water into some buffers say around here in a separate building the empty canisters that will come from this will go back into that train station over there to go back to the water plant to get refilled again and bob's your uncle it's just going to do a full loop the water pipes will then come out of these buffers that we'll put down here which will go into a building into refineries so we're going to put down uh it, don't look at the numbers on the right this is going to be their majority of the time, even when I delete it. So it's just giving me a bit of guidance where we're kind of heading to. Um, so we're going to be using the uh, pure quartz crystal, like I said. It's going to require 67.5 raw crystals and 37.5 water. What I've done as well is these lifts right here, these are all that these uh, quartz coming out of here. They've all been load balanced. That's why it's a look a little messy right now. We're going to look at that in the future and clean it up. But right now, these are all 780 lines. Yes, they're all 780. And I pulled it from the load locations where I said at the beginning of the video. So let's go and take a look at them. So first up, we've got the Titan Forest Station and Quartz Extraction. So all we've got is Mark II miners on the nodes, then load balancing to make sure that they are 780 or the maximum capacity they can hold. And that's the same for these three over here as well. They come along this little stretch right here. And as you can see, we've got a 780 line, a 780 line, and then we have a 240 line, I believe. And then that, of course, comes to the train station. And you must be wondering why we've got some empty platforms. Well, I'll get to that just in a second, but we've got a train stop at the front because obviously that's going to be for the locomotive. We have the three stations here, which are going to be loading the three lines coming from the Titan Forest. And then we've got an additional one, 
two, three, four empty stations right here. And that is because I've got somewhere else, I've added three more stations and a uh, stop that's going to provide for a uh, locomotive. And that's where we come to the Northern Forest section is because as you can see, I'm extracting the quartz from the Northern Forest. I also went into the cave over here and started extracting the ores in here, just like so. And I don't know why it's raining in a cave. I've never noticed that. It's actually raining in a cave. Wow. Hopefully Unreal Engine fixes it. But there is obviously spiders in here and he just likes to hump rocks, apparently. Don't you, little buddy? <laughs> so yeah, these are actually load balanced to make sure that we are sending out 780 down here. And then the rest is going to wing into the additional 240, which I talked about earlier. So if we go back to the station here, we can see the station on the front, which is going to be for the locomotive. Then we have a an, another loader into this position because when the train comes in, it's going to be loading the uh, the first line, which is 240. And this one is actually holding 240 as well, which will mean 480 will actually get put onto this station right here. Then we've got two empty platforms because one, that station over there in the quartz facility is going to be filling with 780. And then these three are filling with 780 as well. And then we have an empty platform just at the end because this is where the uh, extra locomotive is going to go. And the reason we need an extra locomotive is because as a rule of thumb, which I've talked about in multiple videos, for every one locomotive is going to be able to carry four freight trains, uh, freight, freight carts uh, to keep optimal speed. So if you use more than four carts on one locomotive, for example, five onto one locomotive, you're going to need an extra uh, locomotive on the back, the front or whatever, uh, just to keep you optimal speeds going up hills. Otherwise, you will lose speeds. That will obviously make its way across the highway into this junction right here, where yes, I've set up path signals just so we can keep some consistency with trade movement, especially if they're going in that direction and if they're going in that direction. If they're going to be pulling in or out of this section right here the trains will wait there and wait here to allow this train to pull out uh, and head where it needs to and if you want to learn more about path signals and you missed the last satisfactory video i recommend going over to that video there'll be a timestamp in the top corner right now and a link in the description that will take you to the timestamp of the video where i explain to you how to use path signals so the next thing i'm going to work on is just eliminating this we don't need this anymore it's not producing any water bottles it's not bringing in any, any uh, empty canisters so we're just going to eliminate it and boom just like that eliminated but as you can see i've left one single line and that's because this is where the water packages well empty canisters are being made sorry uh so they're being made here so as you can see i've kind of left this line running and this is the master empty canisters this is the line that where they're being created from this makes its way along this little temporary line right here which makes its way to the water facility plant and the reason this line is a necessity is because when a new line is created we need to fill it with the initial empty canister so we can create a loop and then once that loop has been connected on this side and then another location and then the empty canisters come back we can then disconnect this line which then can just be sat over there until we build another one because then we'll send them empty canisters into that one and ditto it's just going to basically a be a deja vu we fill the machines up with empty canisters they make bottled water the bottled water goes into a station the station then gets picked up well the station doesn't get picked up by a train but the train picks up the items in the station send it to location b then location b empties the water bottles then sends the canisters back into the station brings it back to this location the empty canisters come back around and go into the initial input of the manifold line going into the uh packages hopefully that wasn't confusing uh, uh but most of you now should understand how this whole system works hence why you will never see me build any more of these you'll see me pop them straight in because one i've gone over it over and over again and two we're going to be utilizing these a lot so you don't want to see me building uh, these in every single episode so in the future from now on you won't see me build any of these you're just going to see me pop them in and i'll let you know what they're for and what they're being used for or if there's been any updates or alterations to this plant okay so i'm just adding the foundation right here towards the uh where the water bottles are i'm going to get delivered uh, and then we need to put down our uh, output for this so we're going to put down a uh, industrial uh, storage right there so we're just going to put you there and then we're going to do you on this one as well put you right up there and we just need to do the inputs of this one this time so we're going to do the input here because this is where the empty canisters are going is 
right into here. And then we're just going to use our Mark V belts uh, and just fill them in just like that. And I'm going to do that all the way across here. Now that we've got that, I definitely want to look at where my belts are going into because we're going to put it into a little build in here. Uh, so we're going to unpackage it. And I think the best thing to do is just look at the foundation. And we're just going to grab ourselves a Mark V belt. Bring that to about there and pull that into this because technically four belts can fit on one foundation line, which means we can make an opening here for the belts to go into and then we can send them where they need to go, right? So, and then we can bring the empty canisters back. So I'm just going to put these along here. So I've got like some form of idea and understanding of what we're kind of working with. And then obviously we can't put the build in here because it's going to overlap the train lines, but I think we can actually put it into this general line here. So what I'm going to do is we are going to use the, uh, oh god, I need to cut these down, don't I? Be gone trees. So with them trees out the way, I can actually look at, well, basically extending that a little bit more now. Um, but if they're coming along this line, this is going to be the entrance. We can actually look at putting a foundation here so we can kind of understand our boundaries inside the building. And then later on, we're going to do a bit of decoration as well. So now I just need to extend this out. I'm not going to put an exact amount because... One, I don't know the scale of what's going to be going inside of here just yet or possibly in the future. And I want to make sure that we can easily adapt as we go as well instead of removing things uh, once we're doing that as well. So now I understand where the, the, the belts are coming in here. I can then say I want a space here for any form of walkways for me to walk along. Uh, walkways for me to, well, basically walk above. Uh, splitters uh, coming down here, which is going to go into a packager, which I'm guessing we should be able to put down here. Uh, so if we look at a packager, we're just going to put that down just there. And then we're going to put this down here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, uh, connect quick. Uh, I'm going to run out of fuel. Wait, how many did I put down then? Uh, ten. I need three more on the end of that. Three more. So if I put that one, two, three, that should be the length of that building. And then if we just put that along there, that gives us where the edge of the building is going to go. We can just zoop this along here like that and then take this along there. And now we've got a bit of an L-shaped grid of what we need to do. Then we can kind of figure out we have two water bottle lines coming in. So we just need to double this up and then I can find out where the edge wall over here is going to go. So if we just bring this to this location, because we can just bring two uh, lines down here with two pipes, three pipes, because the amount of water that's coming out of here is going to go into three pipes. So we're going to bring these all the way along here as well. Put them into there like that. And then we're going to get our splitters on the on our back side of the building here. I'm just going to put these all the way down here just like this. And then on this side, I'm not going to do the belts just yet, but I am going to set up the uh, mergers. And I want the, uh, the empty canisters to go that way because they're going to go back to the train station, right? So we're going to put this in this general location. We're going to put it nice and tight and compact. We're just going to put these all the way along like this. Once I've done that, I've got an understanding of where everything's going to go. So I can put my splitter down here as well, like this. And then I can figure out, and before I finalize these belts and this little system, is making sure that these belts can come in here nice and organized. So we're going to bring down this belt right here. Uh, and I'm out of fuel for my jetpack, so I need to go and get some of that. And I'm about to run out of aluminium as well. Okay, so I need to go and quickly grab some package fuel and grab some um, aluminium sheets because, one, I need them for belts. So I'm just going to go on and grab them. So let's grab some packaged fuel so I can get around a lot easier. And to be honest, a lot of you kind of do ask every now and again, why do you not use the hover pack now you've unlocked it? It's, to be honest, I build a lot quicker, and I get this in the live streams as well, I build a lot quicker with the jetpack than the hover pack. Unless I'm doing a vertical building that requires me to work on the outside, yeah, I'll use it then. But to be honest, if you've seen me ever place belts down or anything like this or build splitters and all this kind of stuff, you'll see that I can build pretty fast with just the jetpack. Because one, you can control the speed of the jetpack. Uh, and two, the hover pack, you can only go one constant speed. Uh, and that's just not me. <laughs> Let's also get some aluminium sheets. We're going to need quite a few of these, to be honest. I don't want to get too much. And to be honest, my inventory is full now. So Bob is your uncle. Well, let's empty, get rid of them canisters we don't need. And then I can start placing these belts back down here. Oh, I've got to do this here. But actually, let's bring that along here first. Otherwise, my outbound lines are going to keep snapping to my inbound lines. So let's pull that into there. And then obviously what I'm going to need to do here is we are going to need to raise this up because... One, this is my outbound of my empty canisters. So let's just pull you up to there. Pull you up by one. Same for this location as well. Just like that. Bring you to say there. 
and you to here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise that up to there. Do the same for that one. Bring you along. Lining that up there. One, two. Take it up by one. And then I should be able to connect that and connect there to there. Nice and cleanly. So that seems good, which does show and indicate that I can actually create the boundary of this building now in this location like this. Now it's just a matter of connecting all these up with power, setting the recipes, and then maybe play around with some building design and I'll get back to you with some of the ideas I come up with. Okay, so I kind of come up with this little bit of a design right here, as you can tell. And I have uh, completed what needs to be done inside. I've got the belts moving uh, and we've. I'm thinking about making this a part of one of the entrances or a way to get into the building. Actually, I need to uh, quickly fill this block in. So let's just quickly do that. Uh, but yeah, everything's kind of connected up. I've got the power. I've done a walkway that comes along here uh, and I've created these little bit of indentation of a window to kind of just create a little bit of depth on these. Uh, these are very easy to do. And if you're wondering how I got the, the windows along here, just like this, I've done it in many tips and tricks videos and said it in many videos. Just grab yourself a road barrier, place it into wherever you, the location you want it to do, go into. So I've aimed at this line here, which is the center of this foundation place that down got myself a window aimed at the uh, barrier hold control and replaced it so it allows me to create a half if i wanted to um well how do doing the road barrier stuff you can make it into increments down here and all that kind of good stuff so with all this being done now it does mean i've got my pipe set up uh, and as you can tell i've got 10 machines coming down here so 10 going into one line is going to be 600 um and then 10 on that side going into a, a pipe here is going to be 600 as well uh, which means the three on the ends could not fit in there because one a mark two pipe only fits 600 uh, so what i've done instead is 60 120 180 plus these three that's going to be 360 water merging together into this central line right here. And then I made a little entrance down here, which goes into this. And I've got the three pipe holes right here. And what I'm going to do is when I work on the next building, which is what we're going to look at now, is I'm going to create uh, the same style of building to keep the consistency of the look. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring three pipelines. So let me grab this like that. I'm going to bring that over to there and you to there, you to there. So uh, instead of me using wall holes, I'm just basically using the vertical stands here, like you can see. And then, I mean, I, I am clipping it through like this. So I'm just getting the the, um, the foundation so it clips through like that. So it kind of, you know, it looks like it going through the wall. Uh, and then we kind of need to extend this foundation out as well and chop down more trees. Be gone, trees. We don't need you. I think I'm going to have to get rid of that one as well, aren't I? Let's just do it now in case we do, but then you watch, I won't need to. And then I'm going to create the same size building because hopefully that will be fine. Uh, I don't mind little bits of machines that are going to be kind of clipping into the wall. As long as a stationary is uh, clipping with another stationary object, I don't really mind that. It's when a moving part is moving within a stationary object. It just doesn't look right to me. So I'm going to bring this up here as well. And then I can kind of work on the boundaries of the building because uh, this is where the canisters are going to come into, or the canisters, the buffer. Uh, and if this were the pipes are going to be coming here, let's just extend these along to this location as well. Just like that. Bring that down by one. And then I know for a fact I'm going to be getting my uh, fluid buffer right here in the middle, which is going to compensate for the middle line. So we're just going to put that there. We're going to put one here to the left like that. And then we're going to put one down here as well. And we can kind of see that they are clipping through the wall a little bit. Um, but I'm going to make indentations for windows. And we're just going to double this over. And I, ho I hate how you can't hold control and snap it to the side of these buildings um like you can with any other building it actually snaps it to the top and we're just gonna do lengths of four like this just like this we don't need this many buffers uh i'm i'm just very cautious of what i do and i'm not the more storage the more safe you will be in case the water you know cuts off and at least you've got a bit more extra time before everything cuts off to the machines, you know? Um, so I'm just gonna, oh, I actually need more plastic. God damn it. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go get more plastic and I'll finish this building. There's nothing special that's going inside this. We're just gonna create, I guess, um, this could actually be the end here. Um, so we can put that to the end right there and then we can kind of say, Bob's your uncle on that building and to make it look very similar to that. And then we can look at the refinery building and we'll go through the mathematics on what we need in that. Okey dokey dokey. So we've, uh, well, as you can see, I've added the, the, the outside of this building now. It's nothing really special. It's literally, I, I added uh, an extra line. Uh, so now we've got five on each side. There's nothing needed. It's just that because I already built the outside wall, I had room to build another buffer. But for this setup right now, as you can see, the numbers have changed on the right hand side. 
because what I'm looking at here is if we get a refinery, we're going to be pulling in 780 quartz per each line. So 780 going into a pure crystal is 67.5. So 780 divided by 67.5 there, there, is 11.55 machines. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 11.55 down there. So 11.5 machines, 11.5 machines, 11.5 machines, 11.5 machines. That's going to consume four of the lines. That means we've got one line left over. And we're actually going to put that into a constructor. And we're just going to make the simple silica recipe, which is 22.5. So 780 uh, divided by 22.5 is going to be 34.6, which you can see is why the numbers on the right hand side here have now changed. So you can see 34.6 constructors, 46.2 refineries, and we're going to need 2.88 refineries, well, water extractors, overclocked. And that's going to be coming in via bottled water, which we already know because I've already established and talked about. So what I need to do now is I need to start looking into the space for this. So I want to keep a two uh, space consistent gap just for future sake, and then I'm going to put down my uh, foundation just like that so we can kind of understand where we're going to be going uh, and obviously i'm going to put in this down here as well this building's obviously going to be a lot bigger because refineries are a lot taller and then once i've got that understanding uh we're going to do the walkways very similar to that to keep consistent and then we're going to look at putting down a refinery just like there i think that should be fine i would say it'll be fine we're just going to put that down like this and then we're just going to do how many was it 11.5 so i'm going to do 12 12 and underclock the fifth or do i yeah that would be the easiest right is to do 12 and underclock the 12th one or do i do 11 and overclock that one to 55 five? i think underclocking will be better uh so let's do two three four five six uh seven eight nine ten uh do it 10 11 12 <laughs> we got that in the end that one decided to be a bit of a stray dog and go elsewhere so let me just double check that so we've got we've got 12 there now uh, and as stated this one needs to be underneath what it says we 55 percent on the clocking speed so we're just going to put this down to 55.5 percent so that's gonna do that it's gonna be, be a bit of an odd number and then i want to check out the uh sizes here right so if this is going to be 52.5 so if we do how many machines there? 11 point that. So if we do 11 times 52.5, uh, I can't do with any keys today. 52.5, uh, it's going to be 603. So, and then we're going to plus what, what on the end of that? 29.138, 29.13, thing. So that's going to be 632.88 per each line, which is obviously less than a Mark V. So that means I can put down a logistics. I can put down a merger facing me here. That means I can put another one there. It depends on the gap I want to create, actually. I think the gap I want to create would benefit just from doing that. And then we just go flip this and reverse it and put this down into like that, right? You're on the... Actually, can you come a little bit closer? That... Oh, yeah, that is a bit too far out, isn't it? Got to try and line this up right here. So we're bringing that into there to there. That's still... That's not right still, is it? No. It's... Oh, my God, beds. Hello. Hello. You to there. That's better, isn't it? There we go. I just need to obviously move this merger now to face me here. And then it's just a matter of doing exactly the same. So we're going to put down 11 on top of this one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then I could do that there. This is going to give me room to do my splitters along here. Like so. But then I also need to bring in these uh, the water pipes, which we're going to do from the opposite end. And then if all the mergers are going to go that way, that will end up going into a train line or something down there. Or yet, because I'm I'm gonna mainly focus on the crystal oscillators next uh, episode. This one's gonna be focused on the quartz, the silica, and all that good stuff. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to bring out the water from here. Is if we put that there, we are gonna need to do a bit of um, micromanaging here and do some valve work because if uh, if these are requiring 37.5 per each line, that's gonna be. Yeah, 11 times 37.5. That's going to be 412.5. Uh, and then we're going to plus 20.83. Uh, plus 20.83 is going to be 433 water, uh, which leaves us with 160 water spur. I need to... Maybe I'll go down to 11. I think that's going to be used to consume less water. But anyway, I'll do all that stuff and figure that out. Uh, but yeah, we're going to do the splitters coming down there for that one. We're going to get this whole section, duplicate that here. Uh, and then I'm going to put the 
constructors on the opposite side of them, I think. And then the water, I guess, can come into here, like from this general direction, go into here and go up there. I think that might be the best thing to do. Okay, so after many changes and like trial and error on the Twitch streams, trying to work all this together, uh, we kind of got there in the end. So as you can see, I've got uh, 12 machines still, like we've not done anything regarding that. Uh, I brought in the water. That water is coming into three individuals' lines. And like I said, if we look down here and I just bust open this bottom row right there, you can see I've got the central line right here and we're bringing off and just making sure that the valves are sending 150 water uh, into this line here to make an additional one. So this one is sending 150 water, this one's sending 150 water, and this one's sending 150 water, equaling 450 water in there, which is enough for the additional fourth line. So now that we've done that, uh, these lines are all up and running, uh, and we can see the quartz are running. We've got some machines that are obviously not fully operational just yet. Um, but we can see I, uh, with all my builds, I stress test. And what I mean by stress testing is just sending them to a sink just to make sure that all the lines are constantly running and to make sure that, you know, everything's, you know, not just going to go to a storage and I've got to think about removing the, 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 the items from a storage, then make sure everything's working fine. Um, the water's running fine. Uh, obviously, the only problem is right now is this one right here. This one's not receiving quartz. And if this one's not receiving quartz, it's been due to the train input, which is this one. Actually, it could be a water issue, to be honest, because it's got the quartz. Is it a water issue? It is a water issue. Have I booboo'd somewhere? I've definitely booboo'd somewhere. 100%. This line has no water. You have no water. Well, you do, but but you have no line in there, and it's not a pressure issue, because we know that. Which line was it? It was this one, wasn't it? Canister's fine. Start. Empty. And if that's a problem, let's go over here. Check the train line. You can see that I've painted the train that's coming in and dropping the quartz off pink so you guys can visually understand which train is which so i'm guessing it's a problem within here wait a minute hold on a minute you spoon bits I, I can already see the problem now i can already see the problem i don't need 12 13 <laughs> So basically, all of this is wrong. All of this is wrong. So the recipe here, unpackaged, is 120. I've set this up for a 60 input. A 60 input. This is... Oh, bitch, you absolute spoon. So basically, with there's two recipes, right? You've got the packaged water, which is going to do this, which is 60, 60, and 60. The unpackaged recipe is half. Well, it's double. Um, so it, it needs 120 packaged water. Oh, what an absolute spoon. So I guess the only way I can really fix this is by underclocking all of these just to provide 60, which will mean 60 water will go in there, 60, 60, 60, which is the numbers I thought I was doing. But no, I'm a spoon. I'm a bloody spoon. So I just need to underclock all these to 60 to make sure everything runs fine. And then we should be fine and dandy because obviously we're not receiving bottled water here on this line which means we have a train issue and if we have a train issue we have no trains coming in well i said we, we don't have any trains coming in. i mean we're not well, outputting the correct amount of water so let me jump on my little train here go all the way down to my uh water station and find out and diagnose what the bloody problem is because we've got a train coming here right is this what train is this i didn't want to turn that way but oh well is this one of my water trains it should have two blue, two blue on there. Wait, are you mine? You're not mine, are you? You're, go you're the plastic and... Oh, here it is. What's going on, my dude? Are you carrying... You're bringing in bottled water. You just don't have enough. Is that what the problem is? You just don't have enough, do you? So this line is full of water. It's got pl I can just literally just grab a lot of this. Throw that into there right now. And just to help that line out, just throw that in there. Because this train's coming in because it does have... Oh, oh, oh half and here comes pink i've got four of these trains so i've got four pink trains that will go here go over to the uh, quartz plant one and then they'll go to that plant and then black plant so it kind of works out and balances itself so i need to go down to the water packaging thing and find out what's going on there's no empty canisters coming down here wait a minute what, eh? didn't the train oh no i know god damn it bits the train was set to unload. Let's put that to load, shall we? <laughs> so was, that was the wrong thing. So, oh, let's get that out of the way now. That should help, which should now help down there. And obviously, with the, the, the water changes that's been in there now, the empty packages will come through as well. So, hopefully, that should start it. 
So yeah, we're going to actually call that one there. We've got the quartz up and running. We've got the silica up and running. Uh, I just need to kind of find so we can make sure everything's running optimally like it, right now it's not. And all I really need to do is just keep an eye on the lines and just sit here for the next hour and just kind of make sure that all these are up and running like i can see there's less quartz on this line right here compared to the other line so i'm just going to optimize that and find out if it could be just a water issue which as you know with water issues there can be a bit of a problem so with all that being said we have now got this whole section done and it's ready for it's, it's a base of operations now for our quartz or whatever we want to add here in the future so thank you so much for watching check out my other content right here and as always keep smiling and i'll see you in another video